Now we can begin doing a few examples solving some problems that involve spin. In this first one, which I took from Satili's book of Introduction to Quantum Mechanics, this is the example 5.4, we are asked to find the energy levels of a particle with spin s equals 3 halves, whose Hamiltonian is given by that Hamiltonian right there, where alpha and beta are constants. And another question is whether these levels are degenerate. So how do we find the energy levels given some Hamiltonian? Well, I hope you'll remember, for example, from the Schrodinger equation, even though we didn't quite mention it back then, but the Schrodinger equation we know is of this form. Now, obviously writing this in the rack notation. So if we see this equation, well, this is simply an, an eigenvalue equation. Here we can see that the energy is the eigenvalue of the Hamiltonian. And the Hamiltonian, well, we know this is a Hermitian operator. So the expectation value of the Hamiltonian is going to be the same as uh, the eigenvalue of the Hamiltonian. So the way to find it is simply to take the expectation value of the Hamiltonian. And let's write this in Dirac notation explicitly for our for the spin levels. So what this is, remember, we're going to denote each state according to its quantum numbers, S and M, S, Hamiltonian operator, S, M, S. And what is S? Well, we are told that the spin in this case is three halves. So we are going to write that in. But what about M, S? Well, M, S can take quite a few different values. It can go from minus three halves to three halves in integer steps. So it can be minus three halves, minus one half, one half, or three halves. So there are many different values of M and thus the that, that's why we have energy levels. So there are different possible values for the energy and they depend on the angular number ms. So we're going to do this in the general case. Now let's do exactly this. So first of all, obviously let's begin with this Hamiltonian operator and see how it acts on this ket. So our Hamiltonian operator is alpha h bar squared and let's just begin working with this operator a little bit times sx operator squared plus sy operator squared minus 2 sz operator squared minus beta h bar sz operator now first of all remember we know the effects of ss and s squared but we don't really know about sx and sy. So what we can do is remember that s squared is the squ sum of the squares of, uh, let's, I don't, okay, there we go. sx squared plus sy squared plus sz squared. So, and what we have here is sx plus sy, and both of them squared, of course. And this is actually something very, very common to appear in this sort of problems where we're going to have some operator that we maybe don't quite know but we can write this differently in terms of operators that we do know. So the way to write this is simply to take s squared minus sz. Oh, whoops, the squared goes up here. Right? Because that's the same as sx squared plus sy squared. So that's exactly what we're going to do here. So that sum is simply s squared minus sz squared. But we already have 2sz squared here, so this is 3sz squared. So now we have rewritten the Hamiltonian, and let's note that we know the what each of these operators do when it acts on a ket. So just as a quick reminder, s squared, when it acts on some s comma ms state, this gives us h bar squared s s plus 1 and sz acting on some ket sms will give us h bar ms okay just as a, as a reminder so now let's let this hamiltonian operator act on our state that has an s value of three halves and can take several different values for ms so when we do that we have this is acting on three halves comma ms Okay, so now let, let us allow each one of these operators to act on this ket. So first we get, well, I'm going to leave the constants here. 
So S squared acting on this is going to be 3 halves times 3 halves plus 1, and this is multiplied by h bar squared. Then we have minus 3 times Sz squared. Well, what is Sz squared? It's simply applying Sz twice. So what is Sz? It's h bar ms, so we get h bar squared ms squared. And yes, I was just checking the parentheses. There's enough parentheses. So then we have minus beta h bar. And once again, Sz, which is simply h bar ms. Okay, so now let's multiply. And this is still acting, of course, on 3 halves ms. So this is going to be alpha times this first part. This is 3 halves plus 1, which is 5 halves. And times 3 halves, this is going to be 15 divided by 4. And the h bars will cancel out, the h bar squares. Then we have minus 3 alpha ms squared. And then minus beta ms, all of this acting on 3 halves comma ms. So this is the effect of the Hamiltonian operator acting on some ket. However, remember what we want is not just that, we want the sandwich of the Hamiltonian and the bra of this state. Whoops, I meant to write here the Hamiltonian operator, 3 halves ms. So let us now sandwich this right here because we know that these things are the same. So here we're going to just put this same bra. And since this is just a constant, we can move it outside. And now what we have, we have simply the inner product of states that are normalized. So that's simply going to be one. So this right here is going to be that's going to be our energy levels. This is going to be our energy. And we can see that this value will change depending on what the exact value of ms is. If you want, you can go ahead and just plug the numbers in just to see what you get. And that's actually the result. And now the second question is whether or not these states are degenerate. The way to do that is to actually plug the numbers into this, the values for ms, and see if any of the values will be duplicated. If they are duplicated, then you will have some degeneracy. If every if you have four different values for and which means one for each value of ms, then the states are not degenerate. And in this case, the states are non-degenerate. Okay, so you can just plug them in and you will see that it's not degenerate. Okay, so that is this problem. I will see you in the next video.